everyone, and welcome to Sit in It for a Bit with Arna and Carlos. And we are, as always, your, your hosts, <laughs> Arna and Carlos. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you go on autopilot, and uh, yeah, I kind of just went on autopilot. Yeah. But anyway, here we are back with our weekly podcast, Sit in It for a Bit. And so far, so good. We've been able to fulfill our promise to you guys. We've been here every Wednesday since we started. And for those of you who are new and have never watched this podcast uh, before, uh, you may risk sitting through an entire podcast that has nothing to do with knitting. We don't know uh, what we're going to talk about because we don't plan what well, we plan a little bit. Will, will yeah, we talk yeah, about knitting? A little Maybe bit. A little, a little yeah. bit, yeah. So um, the name of our podcast, Sit in It for a Bit, means that you sit in it for a bit and listen to us talk about whatever it is that and comes to mind. We might do something different, something yeah. else. We might. You never know with us. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we pre-record uh, our podcast, as you guys know, and uh, we're not completely in tune with uh, the world events uh, when you watch uh, our podcasts, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But it's the only way we can actually fulfill uh, our promise and be here every Wednesday. And this is the first one we record after Russia inv invaded Ukraine. So now we are up to date mm -hmm. and we want to thank all of you who bought the Save the Children, the Red Barna patterns from our web shop because the money is picking in yeah. for Save the Children, which is very important. At yeah. this time. We went out with, the, uh, with this uh, on February 28th that we were going to uh, donate all the proceeds from all three patterns. Uh, to save the children at Barna and actually we decided to do it retroactively as well so uh, and, and we forgot to mention that when we did our little snippet uh, but anyway um, we've done it retroactively so we've already um, calculated how much uh, the patterns sold for in January and February and we've already sent that money to Red Barna here in Norway so they have already received quite a lot of money uh, because we had a sale in February which actually brought in quite a lot for these three patterns. Yeah. So if you bought the pattern before, we went out with this on February 28th, but if you bought it this year, uh, the money still goes to Ukraine and Save the Children, so that you know. And we'll continue uh, sending money every month uh, until the end of this year, uh, or maybe we'll send uh, money until April, because these, because there's been a lot of activity, and then I, I, we suspect the activity will fall a little bit, or slow down and then maybe we'll send April until December in, in December. We'll see, we'll see what and, and it also depends on the situation. Yeah. So, but if you're new to the channel, please check out the website and support Save the Children. Yeah, and so, you do so by buying patterns, which yeah. we think is a, is a great way. I mean, it's a simple way to contribute. You pay nine dollars uh, or nine euros or nine pounds or whatever it is. You pay that to get the pattern, so you get something for yourself. You can knit it for yourself. You can knit it for your kids, and then all of that money we send that to uh, Red Barna, save the children in Norway, and then they uh, have earmarked that money to Ukraine. We've been in contact with the, the organization, um, of course, because we've already sent money, and uh, all of it is going uh, to help children in Ukraine. And you don't need to knit it now. No. It's all about getting the pattern. Yeah, so, get the pattern. And it's easy because it's like a hat and mittens and a sweater with the jungle. Mm -hmm. So it's basic. It it's is very yeah. easy. But you look stunning, Carlos. Mm. What have you done this morning? Thank you. Oh, I thought you were going to say... Our life is like normal then. Well, yeah. Apart from that, things go on like... Yeah, things go on. We still, we're still at home. Uh, we're traveling more. We're going to talk a little bit about that later. Mm -hmm. But we're traveling more. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I thought you were going to say I looked sporty. You look yeah. stunning. Because I, oh, thank you, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I love did this. some shopping while we were in America. Yeah, and Arne, Arne bought me this hoodie. He said, uh, I look so good in these colors. But I did some shopping. And he wanted me to have it, so he bought it for me. And uh, I, yeah, I love it. Uh, and then, um, and, the, and you're wearing a jacket, uh, also a little bit sporty, that we got yeah, it. But you are more sporty. Yeah. You I'm, look like a Mondrian. Yeah, a, sp a very picture. sporty Mondrian painting. Uh, painting. Mondrian. Yeah, I put you on the wall. Yeah, I've li I've literally <laughs> come from the treadmill. Uh, so I've been on my treadmill, uh, finished my workout, put on my uh, hoodie, and came in to do sit in it for a bit. And you came in with a lot of good ideas because that's what happened when you were on the treadmill. Yeah, I know. I don't know why, but um, I you think you come back and then you're like explode. Yeah, explosion of ideas. 
So that's good. Yeah, so I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what kind of workout I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing a workout program that was uh, custom made for me uh, while I was uh, rehabilitating after having COVID. I had COVID, for those of you who don't know, in March 2020, and I was almost, uh, well, I almost died from it. Uh, but I recovered, and uh, then I had to do a lot of uh, rehabilitation because of my lungs and a lot of issues. Um, and uh, my physiotherapist uh, told me to do the 4x4 four four interval, <laughs> which means I run uh, four minutes uphill on my treadmill, and then I walk for four minutes on my treadmill, and then I alternate these four times. So all together, I do 32 minutes of running or walking uphill. What are you laughing? Because... Okay, of course. You, you get a lot of good exercise and look stunning and... I don't know about the all that stunning stuff, but that treadmill. That is the most ugly furniture we have ever brought into the house. And now it has to be in the guest, house, guest room because there's no space for it. And you it's, hate it. It's so ugly. Yeah, I know. I don't know, we have to build something for it. Yeah, I, I know you hate it, <laughs> uh, and I love it, so uh, yeah. Because there was a, the room was so nice before. I know. You know the Chinese cabinet, the vinyl records. Yeah, I know. And now there's the treadmill. Yeah, well, it's temporary, you know, I mean, until we have space to move it somewhere else, yeah. we'll, we'll move it. So but yeah, I mean, I love, the, I love doing the workouts, and I'm, when I'm running there, I release a lot of energy, and I come up with all these really good ideas and you know when I come up with the best ideas when I'm actually running so when I do my four minutes of running uphill that's when I kind of uh, come up with everything and then when I walk that's when I start taking notes on my on my iPhone while I'm walking I'm taking notes and but you have that string in case you fall yeah yeah there's a there's an emergency thing that I connect to my yeah. to my pants and there's another funny thing I was thinking about when um, when we did the when we were locked down for the pandemic uh, every time we did a video we just put on something on the top to look uh, presentable and we could have been sitting there in, in train in like sweatpants or, or long johns or whatever <laughs> and even when we had our very important business meetings and even zoom lectures we could have had uh, some really ugly bottoms but nobody would have noticed i think most people have actually. yeah most people did but today um, i my bottoms actually could be part of my outfit it's because... not as colorful no no it's they're not colorful but they do look uh, they're sweatpants so i'm actually i i brought the, th uh, the theme through completely okay. i'm very sad though that i didn't get a, a pair of pants in the same i think uh, that would have been too much you think <laughs> i think i would have looked great and then in the same store where we got these i also got uh, sneakers in this yellow and in this red so can you imagine wearing a sweatpant Matching my my sweatshirt and then the sneakers. Is that what they call matchy matchy? Matchy matchy, yeah. <laughs> Which I actually really hate. Well, for this you can have it. Maybe. Okay. So what else is up? What what else is new, Carlos? Actually, you run, or something happened with one of your stockings for the folk costume. Yeah, that's and true. And we had to order more yarn because. I just sew a stitch with yeah. the sewing thread, but I think we could, we can fix it with uh, yeah. the wool yarn. But I think we have to we have to knit a new pair of socks for you. Yeah, so we, we got the yarn. Well, so or that's... or you. I mean, but it it, it happened in December for uh, Christmas when we were dressing. I put on the stockings and I realized that there was a uh, what? <laughs> Sounds like a lady from the fifties. <laughs> I'm should, not a lady maybe from you the should 50s. cut your toenails yeah anyway I put <laughs> I put on my stockings and you know I put them all the way through um, across the knees and then I was all up to, you know <laughs> I was <they're> long <laughs> I was fastening them with my garters garter bags <laughs> this, this, this sounds worse and worse this yeah but you know we're living in 2022 so deal with it you know deal I mean today clothes are for, for all everyone. genders anyway I was putting on my stockings and I realized that there was a, a hole and we can't figure out whether the hole was there because uh, somebody dropped a stitch when they were knitting them either I or you I probably. think maybe that's the problem or because... or if I may have run into something and uh, ruined it somehow so, so this is the one we're making one more pair of. Yeah. Uh, this one. Yeah. It's too much. It's sunny outside today. Yeah. So um, we're gonna have to man. The problem is because we got the yarn. Uh, we got some yarn for this. 
Um, I'm gonna open this pack. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make another pair as well, the one from Satisfall, because the pattern is in this book. Yeah. This, this one has has all the folk costume s stockings yeah. in Norway. So, Very good. so here's the yarn. It's a natural uh, white, so it's uh, it's not bleached. And uh, it's called Vilje. It's from Hillesvog, and it's actually Norwegian lamb's wool, which is lovely because it is so yeah, it's soft. Really nice. It gets and softness when you when you wash it. Yeah, and it doesn't itch either, no. which is great. So uh, we got four four balls of the same batch, so that because if you if we knit one stocking to fix the the stocking that has a hole in it, be another we have we have to uh, knit the second one as well. Because I started a pair of the satin doll. Yeah, so socks stockings and. We had just leftover from the from this one, yeah. And I couldn't find the matching, mm. the the number of the dyeing. Yeah. What you call that? Dye lot. Dye lot. So. So now we've got we've got four. So there's four here. Uh, so a pair for me yeah. and a pair of satin stockings for Arne in the same um, dye lot. Yes, but you want to have shorter feet on those now. Yeah, I, I think was... we made them a little bit too long. So yeah, the heel comes off when you put on your shoes. Yeah, that, I was noticing that already when uh, when I put it on the first time. I mean, when I try it on without putting a shoe on, there was not a problem. No, but you used them. Maybe we should wash them. I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> when I is. well, we can wash the one the one that has a, that is uh, ruined and yeah. see what happens but what what I was gonna say was when I tried it on the first time it fit my foot perfectly yeah. but as I put the shoe on I realized that the heel goes up mm. so I do need I do need a little bit less uh, of a size but, but we went to the on my shoe or my on my foot yeah but we went to the arch and craft shop in Lilyhammer a few days ago because we were working on the fall costume and we needed to ask some questions and take some pictures of the jacket in the shop because we were working on the jacket mm. and the lady in the shop said that we could always use yarn and if we have the same lot but it's only one stitch mm. so she said we could save it by just making a, like a duplicate stitch or make a stitch in yeah. the... Yeah, do so you want to do that or do you rather knit it? I will do both. Okay, yeah. Because if you have a new pair, you will have shorter feet. And not that I'm going to do it all myself. You're going to need some of it. Mm. And then we can have the other one as a, like a reserve. Yeah, like a, a, a backup. A backup yeah. so stocking if it, something mm. happens. Mm. So yeah, anyway, that was the big drama here in December. Uh, realizing uh, last minute, we, were, we weren't even home. So I was putting on the, the stocking, there was a big hole. And I just said to Arne, we have to figure something out. And then Arne said, I'll just look for some needle, uh, a needle and a thread. And you went in and asked our, our hosts yeah, if they had stitched it together. needle and thread. And then you had to... So you can't see it. Actually. No, that's true. I think if you look for it, it's hard to find. Yeah. Because I'm so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then again, you know, no, it, it, it is... It was only one stitch. Yeah. But then, you know, it is the folk costume after all. You want it. Mm -hmm. You want it to be... Perfect. But I think the problem is that like when you have those thin needles and you're just so eager to get ready and the knitting go a little bit too quick and sometimes mm. you can maybe you go into the yarn instead of picking up the whole yarn yeah. and you split the yarn. So maybe that's something with really, it. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. But it, now it's Yeah. We we make new we, ones. We'll make new ones. And it was really the highlight of our week because uh, we haven't had we you know, we got a little it's also technological now, the the yarn supplier, he sends uh, the yarn through uh, a forwarder and then the forwarder has both our email and uh, phone number and we're here, you know, minding our own business and suddenly we have a pling on the phone and then there's a message that we have a package and, and then we, we went down to the supermarket because it gets delivered there because nowadays in Norway the post is in the supermarket so we go down to the super uh, we give them the code and then they give a, they gave us a box uh, full of yarn um, and that was a big highlight of the week we got this yarn for um, the stockings and then we've got yeah. some for some samples that we're doing yeah we're doing samples now because we are preparing for the first cruise yep this year's first yeah. cruise and we we got uh, this beautiful gray color 
Yeah. Is Musk from Hillesvold is a Norwegian yarn again? And then a white one as well. So, uh, so this is the project on the boat this, this year. time or maybe this year. It depends if we have, if we have always have people who come back. Then yeah. you have to find new projects. Change, or change the colors. Yeah, because this time there are only new people, I think. Uh, now there's some uh, recurring. Yeah, but they haven't done this project. No, because we've changed it up. We've <laughs> had we've had two years to figure out what project we're going to be doing on our cruises. Yeah. So so this is for this year's project. I Normally love, we love, have, uh, love, yeah, love. We have we have like what do you call it? mystery project, but this time. Well, we used to back in. It's, the, it's a mystery until you arrive. Yeah. <laughs> so. So then everything, then everybody get they get the project, the first day when they arrive at yeah. the boat they get the pattern and we will knit some samples so we'll we get a little cute bag see what we well doing. this is this is the bag from 2019 uh 2020 before the pandemic and then a lot of things have happened in our home uh so the ba bags are out of date uh we'll have to figure that one out too uh so uh yeah. but everybody have the bag so it's, yeah. and then if they knit on the same project and they have this bag then it's easy for us to know who's who. Who's who? Because yeah. on the Norwegian boat, there's always a lot of knitters. There are, yeah. And remember, the first time we didn't have any, like, they didn't have like a sign or. Yeah, and we didn't do a knit along no, the first they had, time. No, not like this. No. So, I remember I just walked up to a group of women. I sat down and talked to them, and after a <laughs> while, I understood they were just take, taking a boat, a boat they from one guests. city to another place. So they were not our guests, but it was a nice. It was yeah, of course it was. But now we know because everybody's walking around with this bag, and everybody's knitting the same project on board. So yeah. so we know. But yeah, this this bag is completely out of date. We have to figure something out, and what it's gonna be, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, when our guests uh, on the first day of the cruise when our guests arrive we're there to welcome them and then we give them a bag like this and it has the yarn it has the needles and in the past so in 2019 and 2020 we had a mystery knit along where we gave clues every other day but this year we've changed it up because I think it's good to yeah, change we things have, up. We have to change as well yeah because it's boring doing the same yeah and so this time we have something that we can actually teach people so. and work on for a longer period of yeah. time so, so uh, the first cruise it will take place in may and it is actually the return so it's a long cruise it's 11 11 days this is the uh, the first time that we're actually doing the cruise the north and south usually we've only done the north so it's only six nights on board yeah. we but done one south but then new people there were new people yeah. that was the infamous cruise where we got covid yeah is the, uh, this bag from that cruise no that's from the cruise in um i think it was in 2019 so that's in march the first cruise that then we had these bags these yeah. are from our our agent in japan so this was sold in japan yeah. and you should put something over the o in carl's mm. and the idea is that you recycle your bags so and customize this, them. Customize. So for this one, I found this. Um, it's like a what do you call it? a grid crude. It's a pot holder. Pot holder, but it's just for decoration in the kitchen because this the face is plastic. Mm. So I sold this one on. I had it's to work cool. more on it because it's going out, and we yeah. have two of these. Yeah. But I like to customize the bag and then you can have projects in the bag and put them in the shelves. Yeah. So we encourage we encourage people to customize their bags on the on the cruise. This one you can actually take out and wash it. This need this one need the wash now. Yeah. It's dirty. It is, yeah. But you can take out the face. Yeah. You got this in a in a thrift store in Olesen yeah. when we were on the cruise. That's and one of the places I have to go every time we arrive in Olesen. I yeah. run up to that shop. I hope they are still yeah. there. You never know. We haven't been there since we did the last trip. So if you're on our cruise in May, I hope you like gray and uh, white because that's what you're getting in your uh, in your bag. Look, the face is out. Yeah. And you can put it back. So yeah, we hope you like your gray and white. And other than that, we won't tell you anything else. The rest is going to be a surprise that surprise. you will be able to get uh, when we go on board. And then we look forward to, you know, hanging out with our guests and um, doing these projects together with them throughout the 11 days and enjoying the uh, the beautiful landscape hopefully there'll be good weather in may hopefully, uh, hopefully we we cross our fingers but bring a sweater yeah and if you're if you're bringing your non-knitting friend or your non-knitting partner they will be really busy because these are not cruises 
in the sense that there no, there's no casinos and discos and entertainment like that. But it's an expedition uh, ship. There is a team on board and uh, the non-knitting people, as well as the knitters, you know, when they, you know, if they want to yeah. take a break from knitting, they'll just go to the lectures, learn more about the ecosystems that we pass through our journey, uh, learn about uh, culture and wildlife. Or, you know, you just sit in that beautiful panorama lounge. Either you have your knitting or a good book and you just yeah. suck in the beautiful landscape and enjoy it. So it's, it's going to nice. be, yeah, May is going to be our first cruise. But that's sold out already. Yeah, that's that's gone. Because that was for the waiting list. I yeah. yeah so. at, at the moment, we're actually only releasing our cruises to the wait list. Uh, and we're not releasing it uh, general or broader. So um, what we would like to recommend you guys, if you're interested in a cruise, we're going to be releasing cruises uh, this fall. And we're also going to be releasing cruises next year in March, February and March. So or February or March, we haven't decided yet. So if you want to be on one of them, you do have to contact us and get yourself on the list because you won't get it. Otherwise, we're not going to be sending the um, the information to our, our uh, newsletter. We're only sending it to people who have, who have contacted us, said that they're interested in the cruise and want to be on the wait list. And because there's so many people on the wait list. Yeah. So, so but still, th that there are many people on the on the wait list doesn't really matter because some people want to do March, some people want to do October, yeah. and so I'm th I'm thinking that everybody that wants to get on the cruise is going to get on the cruise. Uh, but we're only doing it for wait lists. So yeah, that was the May cruise. The next ones are open for everyone. Yeah, but it's wait list only, Arne. Oh. Yeah. So we're not giving the access to everybody okay. at the moment because we have a we have a big wait list. Yeah. So we want to give priority to those who are on the wait list for a long time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They've That's been waiting true. for a long time. Two so, years. Some people, yeah, they've been waiting for two years. So anyway, get on that wait list if you want to get information about the cruises. And you can do so by going to arnacarlos.com. You've got the links down below in our description. And from there, you can contact us uh, right on the subject line that you want to get on the wait list. Um, and we will put you on the wait list and send you information as soon as a new cruise becomes available. And there will be several cruises coming up uh, this fall and uh, winter. Can we? T we have a surprise on the boat. We're changing a little bit. The cruise, the cruises. Well, not, not, not yet, Arne. Are we not doing that in May? Mm. No, in May we are on the traditional mm. hutu. Yeah. I know, but we have a guest coming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Sorry, I thought you thought we were changing <laughs> the ships. No, we're not. But we have a guest. Yeah. Actually, we are we're changing a little bit now because we have. We have planned to have guests of the yeah. book, like someone who can tell you stories about knitting and... Yeah, art. and we've already done two shows, uh, we've done two series already, the uh, Lofoten series, uh, where we hang, hung out with Ragnhild up in Lofoten, and then we did the Satastar series where we hung out with uh, Anemur. Yeah. So we decided to invite them to the May cruise. Um, so uh, Ranghild is going to get on, um, is going to board in Lofoten and she's going to spend time with us uh, there and she's going to lecture yeah, she's, for us. She's, she's the owner of Lofoten Wool, yeah. so she has this lo local yarn yeah. producer. And she'll be selling yarn on board. Yeah. And then we've got Anne Moore who is going to board in Trondheim um, and, and be with us for the end of the trip. And Anne Moore is going to lecture in um, something very exciting that we don't know. Uh, I mean, Anamur is so amazing and she's so knowledgeable that we don't even have to know. No. Uh, we told her that whatever you want to lecture is fine with us. So yeah. if, you know, and she will probably bring all her beautiful samples as well. Yeah. And her latest book is out in English. I think she will bring it. Yeah, Koftar and the, yeah. uh, the, the nightshirt tradition yeah. or heritage. I don't know. I don't remember the title. But in I think English. she will be a regular after a while. She, uh, Anamur, if she has time, we like to have her on the boat, so she, so she also can tell people something. Yeah, she knitting. she loved the idea. I um, think it's interesting. Like if you come to Norway to have it on a knitting cruise, you have to meet more than us. Yeah, and we have a lot of people with. A lot of knowledge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you it's guys nice to bring some new faces yeah. in, and it gives the extra. And and those are people that they that you know you guys have seen on our on our yeah. films or on our videos. So it's kind of like when you meet Anemore, it's gonna be like oh, 
I feel like I know you because you were in two episodes, uh, and maybe you do know her because she's been lecturing all over the world. She yeah. is one of the I most. I think a lot of people have met her. Yeah. yeah. All over. Yeah. She's one of the most important people in the in the industry in Norway when it comes to cultural history and the and the history of knitting and all that. So we have a lot of exciting things. To yeah, do. I'm looking forward to cruise to yeah. the knitting cruise. And then in a future cruise, uh, we're also going to have Anne Bordskort. She is uh, an expert in selbu mittens, and she's actually written a book uh, or two books about oh, the selbu yeah. mittens. And I think that she is uh, published at Trafalgar Square Books, she is. our publisher. Yeah. And we've already communicated with Anne about uh, getting her to board in Trondheim at some point, you know, in one of our cruises and take the boat with uh, us and our guests for a day or yeah. two and, uh, and do a lecture on uh, Selbu and the mittens. And she said that she could then liaise with the uh, arts and crafts organization from Selbu oh, to yeah. bring all the samples as well so that people can enjoy it. Nice. That could be amazing. Yeah. So we have a lot of plans. Lots of plans. Our cruises are getting a makeover. Uh, and then as Arne, I thought Arne was talking about the boats, eventually we will do some of the cruises in the, uh, in the green boats, the, uh, the ones that are more environmentally friendly. Um, but we'll probably do both yeah. because we love, we love the Hurtirut concept as well. Yeah, we love concept both It's so good. So, yeah. So we have plans. We have a lot of, a plans. Lot of plans. And then, and then the, yeah. we're also uh, resuming the garden trips. We started... Um, yeah. This year, uh, the trip that got cancelled in 2019 or 2020 was in a UK trip. Well, that was a really great trip. Yeah, but we had to. That has to be planned over again. Yeah, because we had some appointments which doesn't. Do. Yeah, like well, if you did an appointment two years ago, it. You know, necessarily, it's not necessarily something you can do two years later. Yeah, and the main so. appointment for that trip was the the price, private tour of of the Garden of Charlie. Charlie. Charlie's our, Garden. Charlie's Garden. Charlie's our friend. Our Charlie. friend Charlie, who is also known as uh, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. <laughs> so, uh, and his uh, uh, wife, the Duchess of Cornwall. Uh, you know the two people who make these bags with seeds that we get in the post yeah. every now and then? With yeah. a card from Char Charlie. Yeah, and whatever we spend there on, uh, goes to their charity. <laughs> Anyway, he, uh, his garden uh, is difficult to get into and we had tickets, we lost them. And when we were talking to Geeta about a garden trip um, now, uh, we decided that instead of going to the UK, we go to Italy and then we're leaving the UK trip for maybe next year or the year after. And Geeta, that's the, what, what, was, what was her role in English? She's Gita, she, well, she is the organizer of the trips from the travel agency and yeah. she is she travels with us as the tour leader as well, so she... She's also the yeah. one who is organizing. So she is the one that works behind the scenes, so Arne and I don't have to. We're just decoration. Yeah, we just smile, uh, <laughs> we hold a glass of uh, wine or champagne. You have to bring this one. Yeah, we welcome our guests on board and then we spend time with them for the duration of the trip. Uh, whilst Gita is always behind the scenes making sure that everything is running like clockwork. Yeah. And the trip to Italy that we're doing this year is also phenomenal. And um, for the one in the UK, we used to get access to uh, Highgrove, the, the Prince of Wales uh, garden in his private home. For this trip, though, we, we managed to get exclusive after hours um, at uh, the gardens uh, at the Borromeo Island. The, yeah, after it's closed. Yeah, after it's closed. And uh, I think it's Isola Bella. Yeah. And this is not for people on the waiting list. This is for everyone. Well, this trip or we... we it's, it's not sold out yet? Or maybe by the time this is... I out. think it's not sold out yet. Because we released it so uh, late. Uh, that if you go to arnacarlos.com and you select journeys, you can have a look at the trip uh, in Italy. And I think it starts on May 26th until June 5th. And we have exclusive private access to Isola Bella, one of the Borromean islands, after closing time. And we're having dinner in, this, in one of our favorite streets in Florence. Yeah, in one of our favorite restaurants. The restaurants, and yeah. you have your tea shop, and I have, the, yeah. or actually we both had the antique shop. Yeah. Our favorite antique shop in Florence. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do some business. Yeah, <laughs> some shopping business. <laughs> We've been traveling a lot to Florence uh, since the start of our career. Um, because in Florence there's this trade shawl called Pitti Filatti, which has to do with yarns. It's not, a, uh, it's not for consumers, it's for businesses. 
and all the high-end development of yarn is done in Italy. The I best. think we talked about that last Yeah, time. we've done that many times, uh, talked have about we, it. Yeah, I think we talked And about so we have, you know, for the last 20 years of our career, we've been going to Italy all the time. So yeah. Florence is one of those cities that we've been to a billion times and we know really well. And personally, we prefer the other side of Florence, uh, called Oltrarno, which is uh, the side where, where the cathedral is not. So yeah, that's the best yeah you cross the Ponte Vecchio into the other side of, of Florence where the it's where the Pitti Palace is. More quiet than Yeah, it's more yeah. it's I mean it's not as full of tourists uh we queuing. Are tourists. Yeah, but <laughs> It's a little bit more, I don't know, it feels a we little more authentic in. somehow. Yeah, we try to melt yeah. in. You a speak Italian. So. Oh, no, I don't. No, you don't. I don't speak Italian. I, I, I speak Spanish and pretend it's Italian. Yeah. It's different. You understand what they say. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, if you want to join us, we I don't think the trip is sold out because we were so late in, uh, in um, announcing it. Uh, it's a 10-day trip. It starts in Rome. Uh, takes us to some of the most beautiful, uh, one of the most romantic uh, gardens actually, Il Giardino di Nimfa, mm -hmm. near the Pope's uh, summer uh, residence. Then we're going to the Villa d'Este, which is remarkable. And then from there on we'll go to Florence, we'll go to Verona. In Florence there's the Villa Gamberaia, the really beautiful green garden that, mm -hmm. uh, with the view, which yeah. I love so much. Yeah. Yes. And then, and then uh, we'll end up in the Italian lakes, which are gorgeous and fabulous, especially in June. Mm -hmm. It should be wonderful. So uh, we hope to see you guys in, on this tour. It yeah. would be lovely if you joined us. Yeah. Yeah. What, what else has happened? We have finished the Dickey. Well, yeah. That's a long time ago now. Well, Bendix, the Dickey is done. And we did a tutorial on this, this on one? Sunday yeah. that you've just enjoyed. And uh, the pattern is available at arnacarlos.com. So all you need to do is uh, go to uh, our website and you can download it there. And it's still cold enough in the in the in the evenings and the mornings mm. care to model it for us yeah because like now we have very warm days and but the nights and the and the evenings are freezing cold yeah so when we walk the dogs it's always nice to have this under the jacket mm -hmm. oh you so, look smashing thank you very mm -hmm. nice this is my new favorite thing yeah i know you've been wearing this one all the time yeah and i'm working on new i'm, I'm gonna do a lot of this i will have like hanger after hanger with this and because it's a it's a pace it's like a lace pattern isn't it yeah and it's what yarn overs and uh, slips two, two together and slip and lift and all the normal thing you do for a lace so it's not a difficult design no, to knit it's easy yeah and it consists uh, i think we've talked about it before it's two it's two panels uh, that are joined on the uh, on the shoulder and then you put it on a circular needle to do the ribbing for the neck so mm. it's a super easy Super easy project, and if you are uh, if you're a new beginner thinking of knitting a sweater, uh, still not ready to knit a sweater, do the dicky first. Uh, that will boost your confidence for sure, and then you can engage in some uh, sweater knitting afterwards. Mm -hmm. And and now I'm work You know, we did that the, the mittens with the tiger, and someone wrote we should do a sweater, mm -hmm. but we are doing a new dicky with a tiger. So this is the front. We have to put uh, duplicate stitches and then we will like, then the face will appear in yeah. this line. It's like a coloring book, mm -hmm. but you have to use yarn. Yeah. Then on the back, it's the pattern from the, o the other tiger mittens. Mm. Yeah. This is in Tasha, but it's also easy. Yeah. Just knit back and forth and and we've actually, we've actually, when we think about it, uh, I mean, we've been doing videos since 20... The first video we posted was on December 2nd, 2015. And after that, we've posted a tutorial every single day since 2015 until now. So, I mean, in December this year, it'll be seven years. Yeah. But one of the things that we... And actually, one of the things we do a lot for Rowan is intarsia design. So we design a lot of intarsia, but for some... Strange reason, Arne, we have never done an intarsia tutorial. No. So it's I time. I don't know why. I don't know why. This is, this is intarsia. Yeah. So we can do a video on this. I think we need to do a video on intarsia so that people uh, or Maybe the see. small squares we did. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. One day. One day we'll do a... Uh, but you have to do it slow. Very. You know, I found something on my phone, on the, on the picture thing. So you mm -hmm. can take uh, videos 
that goes really slow. Have you seen that? No. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's kind of like the same. You can speed them up. Yeah, because now you see, like, on, on, on Instagram, there's a lot of these videos where things are going very quick. Mm -hmm. I think we should go the opposite way. We should go very slow. Yeah. Because sometimes when I do when I do things, people say I'm do it too quick. Mm. But with this camera on the phone, it's so slow. Yeah, that's good. You can brew coffee while yeah. you wait for the next thing. Yeah, but you know there is a there is a setting wheel here on the YouTube channel. If you click on that wheel with the teeth, the settings wheel, you can slow down. How many times well. have you said that? Oh, like a billion. <laughs> But you know, a lot of people, they don't know that. And so we tell them and then they're really happy because we told them that. So yeah, so it's good. It's good, yeah. So yeah. yeah. And then we've been working on the fall costumes. Uh, Things the are happening with the jackets. Yeah, And we realized that we are a little bit short of time because uh, we are going to get really busy. Uh, I mean, at some point we're going to go to Italy to inspect all the hotels that we're staying in for our tour because Arne and I and Gita, we want to make sure everything is uh, spick and span, and, span. and perfect for you guys. So, so we have to go and check it out. We're going to be checking out hotels. And then uh, after that, you know, quickly we'll get into Easter. And then we've got other, other stuff to do. And, you know, from one day to another, May 17, our Constitution Day is coming. And that's when we are <laughs> supposed to wear to these costumes. The so, um... But we're not freaking out. I mean, we've already Things are happening now. gotten through quite a lot. But we have, I think we have to take a call, take a telephone call, or call the arts mm. and crafts shop again tomorrow because I have some questions, but, but now we have actually. So you show your progress and then yeah. I'll show mine. Really? We work like together. together. Yeah. So this is the back of the jacket. It's easier to see yours. So this is now finished. We have to sew this to the front panel. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, done both front panels with the inner fabric. Yeah. So this is stitched on the inside and long stitches on the outside. Because these two, these fabrics are going to help be yeah. held together. So I'll show my progress, and then as you said, it is easier to it's see. It's easier on yours because your, yours is white. Because mine is white. So, um, so but it's a very forgiving fabric, or what you call it, yeah. to work with. It's well, so this easy. is the back of my fab of my jacket. You can see the seams there, and then um, there is an extra seam down there, or an extra piece down there, which is supposed to be there in case you you your behind is in case you gain bigger. weight over the. Uh, so I guess we have to. Yeah, just you never know. There's I mean, a lot of extra fabric everywhere because this is quite a lot of work, and yeah. then you have all this extra fabric if you if you gain weight or if you lose weight, you can yeah, and sew I mean, it in and out as much as yeah. You like. And I mean, it is expensive to make this. We're making it on our own, and that therefore saving a lot of cost. But if you have somebody in Norway make this for you, this jacket is gonna cost six thousand dollars. So obviously, you wanna. You want to have uh, additional fabric 6, there. Yeah. A lot of money. Oh. The, if you buy the fabric and then you have a tailor in Norway make this for you, this is going to be so expensive. I'm glad we can make it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we save a lot of money. Yeah. And then the front panels, they look like this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this is going to be. And, and as Arne was showing, the, the inner fabric that we showed you last week. Uh, and now we have temporarily stitched it to uh, to the uh, white fabric, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna sew it on. Um, I still haven't gotten that far, so I have no idea how. But actually, it's in, it's, it's in the pattern. It's in the written. Yeah, well, you haven't read it either yet. No, I haven't done it either because no, I, I think we should we work. We do parallel yeah. sewing. I, we have two two sewing machines up now. Yeah. One with white thread and one with black threads so and we, we and we actually each. decided to, to only read the instructions we need uh, we don't read and try to understand things before we are exactly, exactly at the point because that is just that's stupid then yeah. if you do that if you're worrying for things you don't know just start on number yeah. one and work down because then it's easier to understand when you're actually yeah. so we read it through point. once so we kind of have an idea of this 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 and this and then we kind of forget about it and then we read each each thing and, and you know 
things we're wondering, like this part here. So this part is sticking out of the of the jacket now. We're wondering about yeah. why. Is it going back on the shoulder, or do you have to cut it? So we'll figure this out. But, so yeah, but we'll figure this out when we figure it out. I think out, we understand so, it yeah. when we start to sew the shoulders together. Probably. So that's yeah. the next step. We are sewing the side seams and the shoulders yeah. and oh, then we are and then we're on the sleeves. And we've got the collar as uh, well. These we have to stitch on, on by hand now. Temporarily stitch the collar by hand. One of them. Yeah, only one piece. Only one piece. <laughs> and, then, and then we're going to work on the sleeves. And then when we start working on the sleeves, I read already in advance that I'm not thinking about, but there's some lining coming as well so yeah, we're getting to the lining in a few in a few days i think um and then there's the one thing that does freak me out a little bit right now because okay. there's an embroidery going down on both sides of the front yeah, but it's it easy. and it goes on the on the sleeve up here and there yeah i know you say but it's i easy. think you freak out because you have to have the same distance between the stitches so you i guess you will use the measure tape i don't know what i'll do i'm a little bit freaking out <laughs> <laughs> but Arne is reassuring me that what you do is it's one long thread in green and, you sew around and then you like sew the around the thread to attach it to the fabric it so it's probably not probably have a name yeah the technique i don't know but so uh we went to the, the sh shop just to see because there are red piping coming and just to see how the piping looked on the garden on the jacket in the shop and we took some pictures and mm. i was a little bit worried about that because I wasn't sure, quite sure how you should do it, but we got some good tips from the people yeah. in the shop. So. We should be fine. So that, that, I think we can make it. Yeah, hopefully the jackets... It's coming slowly. Yeah, hopefully they will be ready in May. And thankfully, Arne, you have a tailor's background, so... It helps. I feel, I feel very um, optimistic that this is something you know, and I trust you, and but, it's going really well. But I looked at the jackets in the shop, and they were they were made in a factory. Yeah, those are so, cheaper, the cheaper jackets. Yeah, yeah so that's some, like that's how I would have sewn it, I guess. Yeah. Because the, from my education, it was more like factory, industrial. Industrial when you, when it came to sewing, we didn't have, we didn't do hot couture. We had yeah. sewing. This is more tailoring and couture. So this is more tailoring, and I I don't want to go far away from the instructions. Because no. it's a folk costume, so I think we should try to stick with yeah. the, the things. We did some things different when we did the, the what do you mm. call vest. Yeah. What's that word? The vest. The vest. The we waistcoat. Waistcoat. We did some things a little bit different because we, I, we thought it was easier. Yeah. So, but, but we tried to stick with the... Hmm. the but the pattern is very... It's funny because it's... Uh, the pattern is this page and it's got 21 points or 21 different things and then there is a uh, there drawing. is a very simplistic drawing that um, uh, you said how many 20 21 points and now we're at number seven we're, we're working with the sixth now yes yeah we finished number five yes, mm. yesterday. Yeah, and it's uh, and it's funny though because I said to Arne, uh, let's do a little bit every day instead of being like overly ambitious and just working and working and working. We're doing a little bit every day. I mean, even if it's only half an hour or an hour, uh, and it's incredible how how much you get done yeah. anyway. So because we have other stuff. Yeah. So yeah. if you work a little bit every day, I think you know my ambition um, is to have this ready after Easter. Yeah. So um, I think we can make it. I think we can make it as well. So around around April, so uh, yeah, in about a month, about a month from now, uh, my ambition is to have them done. And we have uh, actually, we, how many do we have left? We have uh, 10. Well, well, we have one more thing to do. We have 14 before steps we can, left. Yeah, before we can start, uh, but only one thing to do before we can start trying the yeah. jacket on and after that it's all the all the details all the little thingies and there's a lot of the tweaking of green. What's that? there's a lot of sewing by hand to yeah. just uh, I don't know the English word for green. yeah well it's kind of like when you when you sew it you make stitches like yeah like we've done here the long stitches that yeah. you take out after so um, yeah. yeah 
So, and I finished the ladies unfinished project. Yeah. You were not so happy with this well, one. Well, no, I'm not not happy. I just don't like it, but it's a bit kitschy. It was easy. Look, it's I think it's a bit cool. I think this will be in the back of the Fox one. Okay. That's a cool place for it. I can I can live with that. <laughs> it's your car, so. <laughs> but they were not we didn't have to change anything. This yeah. th uh, this is good as it, as it is. But I like it more when you change things up and make them cool. Me too. But look, it, this came with the uh, with the embroidery. Mm. There's more good stuff here. <laughs> you want all of them? Yeah, I want them all. You want them all? Actually, I do like the elephant. Look, a little elephant. That's very cute. And the rabbit. And now the question is, are you out of uh, old lady, or old dead or blind ladies projects? No, or have you found anything I have else? One. I have a lot. So this is the next one. What do you think? <laughs> I like it if you if you do something to it. This one, we have to do something with this. This is supposed to be on the wall again, but this we have to change. We have to add some fabric on the sides to make it square, and we, it will be a pillow. I'm photobombing now. <laughs> but look at the gray behind the horse. That color is so boring. So I'm going to take out all the gray. And use the gray on the horse. Mm. So, this is the next project. Unfinished object. Yeah. Someone else. Someone else's, uh, yeah. Someone and, else's. and this is something Arne has been doing since last year. He goes to the local thrift store because there was a lady who uh, handed in all her unfinished pro projects there. We or don't know. Maybe ma many ladies, I don't know. We, well, it could be many. But we don't know who they are and we don't know if they handed them in because they were blinded or they died or they just got really fed up with embroidery. But Arne, Arne in the spirit of recycling, is buying them. That therefore, I'm saving them. Yeah, well, you're also supporting the organization because mm. it is a humanitarian organization it as is. well who runs the thrift store. So Arne is spending money there, supporting them, and then at the same time, he's finishing uh, all these dead uh, or blind women's uh, projects so that we may or have fed or, or fed up with embroidery ladies. So that we have. We know his ladies because they told me it was. Oh, they knew that? Yeah. I didn't ask the name. You didn't ask for the specifics? No. Mm. But the, the, the gray, it's so boring. Yeah, it is ugly. Uh, and it, do it, something it didn't with come it. with a yarn, so yeah. you have to find different yarns. Uh, you know what I'd do? I'd, I'd actually start taking a lot of this out, or maybe embroidering on top. No, it, it gets too thick. So take I'm it out. I'm going to take it out. Ooh, moose, moose. moose, 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 moose. Talking about moose, there were tracks in the garden there was a moose walking in the garden that's Her probably a moose back. yeah I hope. I hope he doesn't come i was a bit house. afraid because there were tracks on the on the yeah. front porch and the terrace yeah and i was oh you mean the, ter the terrace here yeah, yeah. And, and i was sure it was a moose mm. who's been walking on the terrace and that they can fall through they're heavy yeah but i was out there looking at the tracks and it was helmers yeah he's been jumping back he up. has yeah so, uh, moose in the garden, yeah. It must be a moose. Probably. Or and fishers. Or fishermen, or... Uh, it is the time of the year. Weather has been stunning for the past weeks. I mean, really gorgeous spring weather. Mm -hmm. um, all yeah. in all, all in all, it's, uh, it's great. Yeah. Every year, though, we complain um, for the past years because of the... Um, we live in a place, uh, we live permanently here, but there's a lot of cabins around, and they used to do the skiing tracks. And for many years they didn't uh, do them outside our house and we were complaining about that and this year they have um and how many times have we been cross-country skiing this year Arne? zero zero yeah zero. because so, it's the, the snow like there wasn't a lot of snow before christmas mm. and it came late but it's not much it's not half a meter mm. it's like yeah it's under 50 centimeters. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. But there's enough to ski and yeah. there's tracks. So tomorrow I suggest we pop on our skis and we go on a, on a, on a little skiing uh, trip yeah. uh, down 
down our slopes here uh, where we live. It would be lovely. Yeah. I'll still, um, and tomorrow, because I did my treadmill today, I'm not doing it tomorrow because I can't do it every no. day, obviously. But we have so, to walk one more time with Helmet. He wants yeah, to so we're, we're going to go out now in this beautiful weather and we're going to take a walk and we're just going to enjoy that. And then uh, tomorrow we'll go skiing. But before we do leave, uh, we're doing our Easter eggs as well. Yeah. Um, we're calling it a knit along this year as well, but we're not actually going to be doing a knit along this Easter the, the way we did it last year. Last year we were on every day uh, during Easter um, to tell stories. We're not going to do that because we believe in changing things up. So what we're doing instead is every week now for the next weeks, we're showing three new uh, eggs that we've done uh, this year and then you guys can organize the knit along on your own and then what we're going to do after Easter it's actually going to start on the f on the Sunday of Easter is we're going to do a knit along and it's going to be a actually and a crochet along mm. so we're going to do a floral crochet along slash a knit along where we're bringing back uh, the squares uh, that we did during quarantine knitting and we're going to be doing it for five weeks. So we're going to get um, anybody who wants to learn how to crochet a flower and join them. You are going to be able to do that uh, because we're going to be explaining every step in our knit along or crochet along, sorry. And then for those of you that don't want to do the crochet, you want to do the, the patchwork, we're going to be doing that as well. So we're going to be doing two, two alongs uh, at the same time. Um, from Easter Sunday and, and then five weeks. And we have some plans for the knit along if if we have time to finish what we're thinking yeah. about. So, so Arnett, today we've got uh, three new eggs yeah. to feature. So we have this one. It's like a little flower. I don't remember what we called it. I think we called that one tradition, didn't we? Oh, that's Do you want me to look them up? I've got, I've them got up. my stuff here. So that if you talk about it, I'll look so it up. This is easy. I think that's the flower name or something. Yeah, let me, let me hang on. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you know how it is when I really need to look it up I can't find it oh here it is so let's see exactly what this one is called uh, it is the brown one. Oh, it's the lily lily oh. the white ones so the white lilies yeah. it's maybe really lily, hard to yeah. find ni names we don't yeah. so many eggs and then we have the fruits up in Norwegian it's a it's a fly Ag agar agaric, agaric fly agaric 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 this they, one this one we found this on those french easter postcards we, we did yes so there was like a bunny and a this mushroom yeah so now this is for easter it's very lovely and then the last one is my absolute favorite i really love this one uh it looks like this and it is a Salix Capea flowers. Gås unger in Norwegian. This and is, you pick these branches in and then this. You put them in water and then you, you get all these little cute little buds that spring out. And I absolutely adore this egg. I think this egg is just lovely. And you know, we had those trees in the garden and we had hardly had any gås on those yeah. trees, but the last two springs, mm. there has been gås in our garden. That's great. So those are those are the three eggs uh, today that we wanted to show you. If you didn't see last week's eggs, you have to go back to last week's episode, and we've got three eggs there as well. And then we've got two more sit in it for a bit episodes where we will be revealing more of the eggs uh, of the um, of the Easter egg uh, knit along for 2022, which we figured you could organize yourself. If you want us to see your eggs, you can just uh, hashtag them. With, uh, if you're going to be knitting these eggs, hashtag them with uh, Arne Carlos and hashtag them with Sit in it for a bit. And we will definitely go and take a look. And we can't wait to see all your, all your progress with your Easter eggs and also your Easter decorations. We'd love to see how you use them. If you put them in a little basket or if you bring in little twigs from the outdoors, seasonal branches, you make like a big display and put them on. And yeah, so show us. At this time we didn't put any string or loop on them because the plan is that we should felt these mm. because these are knitted in our yarn, the Norwegian yarn from Rowan. But we haven't felt tried yet. I tried with one egg and nothing happened, so we have to try it. Yeah. With a pair of converse or something. Yeah. So that's why they don't have a string, but it's easy to do a crochet yeah. loop or you could do forty chain or you could do a, a ribbon, you could go yeah. get a ribbon. Last year I think we had gingham ribbons in yellow. Yeah. yeah. Yellow gingham. 
which is really nice as well. Mm -hmm. So there's tons of things you can do uh, Just with them. Just make a loop, like a loop and pull it through the egg. Yeah. There you go. But they're also nice if you put them like in a basket or, you know, in that box you, where you have egg. Mm. Well, yeah, so time's up and our 50 minutes, uh, as always, uh, have run out. Have we gone from 15 to 50 now? I said 15. Oh, I thought you said 15 minutes. No, no, I said 15. Oh, the, those are gone. Yeah, <laughs> those 15 minutes are gone for sure. <laughs> Long um, time and then ago. some. And then uh, some. But as always, it's been lovely uh, recapping things here. Uh, we are uh, enjoying doing our student it for a bit weekly and we are glad that you guys are enjoying it too. Yeah. So uh, we'll keep going as hard as we can or as much as we can. And don't be surprised if one day we're sitting uh, and have Venice. Somewhere else. Or, yeah. or, or Florence or Verona as background. Because right, right now we just ended up in this room because of the folk costume. Yeah. So we've been here for a quite a long time yeah it's our it's our sewing room right now it's messy so uh if uh, if you care to because you're nearer if you care to hang this up for me um i can do the formalities yeah so we hope you've enjoyed this uh, episode of sit in it for a bit and uh, give it a big thumbs up if you did uh please become a subscriber the arne and carlos family needs uh you guys uh with us so uh, yeah, it would be lovely if you subscribed. And once you do, don't forget you can turn on your notification bell so that you never miss an episode. Waiting list for our knitting cruises um, is uh, essential if you want to get an offer of one of them. So go to arnecarlos.com, contact us through the contact page, send us some, um, a few sentences. Uh, yes, I'm in, I want to be on the cruise and put the subject line knitting cruises we will put you on the list and get back to you um, and we will start uh, uh, using that list to, to fill our, our upcoming cruises. And, and, and also uh, email, newsletter, uh, the newsletter is also the best way to be in touch and uh, find out everything that is going on. And for the newsletter, all you need to do is go to arnecarlos.com and subscribe to that. So that one you can subscribe on your own. But if you want to be on the cruises on the wait list, you have to contact us and tell us explicitly, I want to be on the cruise so that we can contact you. So Arne, this is it. Our 15 minutes are up. It's been lovely. Yeah, I think we have to get out now. Yeah, Take now Helmer is waiting for us and uh, Freya as well. So, so uh, we're going to go out and uh, do a lovely walk in the sun. And we will see you again on Sunday yeah. and then again on Wednesday. So thank so you so much for watching. You. And peace. And peace. Love. Peace and love. Bye. Bye.